to know that God is with you is enough to calm you because here it is God may allow you to go into the furnace but the truth of the matter is just to know that he can deliver you he has power to do that or to ease your troubled mind Welcome to Mount Zion, where you will have a mountaintop worship experience. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. You are joining the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, located at 3936 12th Street in the city of Ecorse, Michigan. Father God, we magnify your name. We exalt you on this Resurrection Sunday as we reflect upon all that you sent your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to go all the way to the cross just for us. So we have come to worship you. We have come to lift up our voices unto you. We have come to lift up holy hands unto you. So let your Holy Spirit rule and reign in this service. Let your Holy Spirit convict, reprove, and rebuke whatever is necessary that one may come running asking, what must I do to be saved? So Lord, we thank you. Have your way right now in this service. Come on, everybody. Let us praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody get excited for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah.
temple with that. In the name of Jesus. Let me hear you. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. Satan has got to. Father God, how we love you today. How we are just grateful and thankful for your goodness and your mercy. How we're thankful, oh God, that when you looked upon us this morning, you didn't see us for who we are. 
but you saw us through the blood of Jesus. God, we're so grateful that you saw us, not for who we are, but who you have called us to become. Oh, we're thankful. Father, in the name that's above every name, we thank you, O oh God, for the sun that shines this morning on the just as well as the unjust. We're thankful, O oh God, that while we slept last night, the enemy, O oh death, wanted to have his way with us. But you sent those twins, O oh God, to stand on the side of our bed, grace and mercy. Father God, in the name that's above every name, we want to say thank you. Father God, we pause at this time because it's time for the word to go forth. And our prayer, oh God, is that you would move me out of the way so that your people can be blessed. Father, don't let your people lack understanding or reception of your word because of me because of my flesh. I pray that you would anoint my mouth, anoint my intellect, but anoint the ears of the listener. And then, oh God, anoint our hearts that we might be enlightened to your word. Then, oh God, anoint our hands and feet that we might carry out your word. In the mighty, matchless, and majestic name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. What we do not know, teach us where we have not been, take us, and what we are not, O oh God, you make us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you say amen to that, hallelujah. Say it knowing that God answers prayers. Hallelujah. 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 Certainly, once more and again, we're thankful to Almighty God. We want to thank God for... Sister Peggy James, who led us in such a wonderful time of praise and worship. Amen. Amen. That's, I, I, I tease her because we went to the same high school, but she graduated the year I went in, so that's my big sister, y'all. Amen. 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 And, and even more so, we're thankful she is uh, the mother-in-law. I, I guess I should say mother-in-love of our very own brother, Derek Benford. Amen, amen. Director of our instrumental music here at the church. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I don't, hope, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but today is Resurrection Sunday. And, and I was hoping and praying, asking God to allow us to be able to come back into congregational interaction with one another at least by today because I know if if he didn't hadn't allowed us to be able to do this today I wouldn't see some of y'all until maybe Mother's Day y'all didn't get that did you that's because you all come to church all the time but for there's some who only they're they're what we call CME members Christmas Mother's Day and Easter so I'm glad that God allowed us all to be here today Listen, open your Bibles today, if you don't mind, to the book of Mark, chapter number 16 in the book of Mark. Hallelujah. Thankful for everyone who's online with us. Amen, amen, amen. We thank you for holding on and holding up. I, I thank God for this church. We just went through 21 days of consecration together. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. And so we're thankful that we have been consecrating and concentrating as we contemplate what God has for us. Amen. I'm going to read this passage of scripture that is most familiar at this past uh, at this particular time in uh, the life of the church. It's found again in resurrect uh, in uh, Mark chapter number 16, beginning at verse number one. It simply reads as follows. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, 
when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. They were alarmed. He said to them, do not be alarmed, do not be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God that the people of God would magnify him and that we would be lifted up. And the church said, Amen. As is customary, brothers and sisters, during this time of the year, this passage of scripture, noted as the resurrection passage, along with passages found in the synoptic gospel, along with passages found, brothers and sisters, in all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it is rehearsed that Jesus rose on the first day of the week. Oh, we have talked in this week past of what it meant for him to come down from earth or from heaven's glory into the story of earth. How it is that the word of God as it has been declared in the book of John, was wrapped up in flesh and dwelt amongst us. How it is that Jesus, looking at the predicament that man had gotten himself into by way of sin and transgression of the law, knowing that there was only but one way that, that man could be brought back into right relationship with God, that is for a perfect sacrifice to be offered. Oh, we remember how it was that Jesus, the word himself, said, prepare me a body and I will go down and offer up my blood, sinless blood, blameless blood, on behalf of the people, so that the people who you created, oh God, to love you, the people who you created to be in interaction with you, to be in relationship with you as your sons and daughters, could have a right to be in that relationship. Oh, you know the story how it is that Jesus found himself being judged by those whom he had created. How Jesus found himself being judged by those if it had not been for the word, they would not have existed. And before we begin to judge those who judged him, let us look in the mirror today because brothers and sisters, how often have we judged Jesus? How often have we said he didn't do what we thought he ought to do? He didn't save our loved one when we thought he ought to save their life. He allowed us to lose our job. How, is it, how often is it, brothers and sisters, that we find ourselves judging Jesus and not judging him rightly? For if it had been true judgment, brothers and sisters, when we looked at Jesus, we would have said to ourselves, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, the foolishness and folly that we have lived in in our lives would have taken us out a long time ago. And maybe you haven't been that foolish. Maybe I'm just talking to myself today. But the truth of the matter is, I believe that there are others in this congregation today that recognize and realize that you have done some things. You said some things, and here it goes. You thought some things that you know were against the word, will, and way of God. But yet and still, Jesus himself still stepped into your life story. He stepped in and did what? He delivered you from you. Can, 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 can I get a hand clap today that can say, Jesus delivered me from me? Oh, we know the story of how 
in order for his blood to be shed, he had to receive nails in his hands, nails in his feet, 72 thorns on the crown placed upon his head. How he had to receive all of this while he was hung up on the cross. Isn't that something? The one who spoke and created trees is now hanging on the tree. Lord have mercy. Well, before he hung on that tree, he created that tree knowing that one day he was going to hang on that tree, not just for himself, but for you and for me. Isn't it something, brothers and sisters, how we look at the story of how Jesus hung on Calvary's cross? And brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that because of, of the wickedness of man, because of how man had sought to kill him, for personal gain and personal reasons, that the earth began to groan. The Bible tells us that the sky darkened, the clouds covered up the sun. The sun went and hid himself because of what man was doing to Jesus. The Bible tells us that the earth began to groan and it began to quake. There was a mighty earthquake because wrong had not been, uh, right had not been, placed in his rightful place. Brothers and sisters, here it is. If it had not been for Jesus making the decision to hang on Calvary's cross, where would we be today? Then I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, that he who hung on the cross didn't stay on that cross. The Bible tells us that Jesus found himself uh, laid in a manger, or should I say laid in a tomb, I'm sorry, Laid in a tomb. And as he was laid in that tomb, brothers and sisters, there was a seal put over the door. And for three days and three nights, Jesus is put in that tomb. The Bible tells us that he predicted that this would happen. He says, the sign that you will see as it pertains to who I am, as it pertains to why I've come, as it pertains to what I can do, the sign you will see will be the same sign of Jonah. You remember how Jonah was in the belly of that great fish for three days and three nights. But then on that third day, that fish spit him up out onto dry land. Brothers and sisters, for three days and three nights, Jesus found himself in a borrowed tomb. For three days and three nights, he found himself uh, dealing with death. He found himself dealing with the sin of man for three days and three nights. But on that third day morning, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that that grave had to spit him up. That grave had to let him go. I, I know, I know why you're not shouting. You're not shouting because you know Bible. You know the fact that he got up and the term that he is risen is not totally clear because the term where it says he is risen in his original text says he was raised. Lord have mercy. And somebody who is a historical factician this morning, you realize that the difference between he is risen and he was raised is totally different. Can I help you today? He is risen means that he got up by himself. But he is raised means that his father, nobody but the power of God, could get him up. Lord have mercy. You ought to shout this morning. Pastor, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lover of, of, of legalese. In other words, I like TV shows that talk about the law. And in and, and, and my house, as for me in my house, we, we serve law and order. We, we love the TV show Law and Order. We, we love it. We, we don't get too caught up on criminal intent. My wife said that's too fast for her. But the regular old law and order, y'all remember the original one. And one of the things I love about law and order is when they go into the courtroom, there are multiple people in the courtroom. And, and here it is. Some of the most important people in the courtroom are those who are the witnesses, brothers and sisters. And so when we look at the passage of Scripture, that we read today, as you continue to read and you read the Gospels uh, totally encompassing this resurrection period in the life of Jesus, 
what you will find is that there are a multiplicity of witnesses. We find, brothers and sisters, that there is an angel who sits on a stone as Mary and Mary and, and Mary find themselves on their way to, to the tomb. Mary, Mary, and Salome. Listen, brothers and sisters, they find that there is an angel sitting on the stone, and he gives witness, and he says, I know why you're here. I, I know exactly the reason why. You came looking for Jesus, but here it is. You came uh, to the wrong place to find him. You, you came looking for the living amongst the dead. Okay, y'all know there was other witnesses. There was Mary, Mary, and Salome. They find themselves being able to tell others that when they got to the tomb, that there was an angel and Jesus was not there. But then when you read other passages in the Gospels, you find that there was what? Peter and James. They found themselves, uh, or Peter and John, they found themselves looking for Jesus at the tomb. More witnesses. And the scripture says, that there were two others that Jesus revealed himself to as they walked. And listen, the same message came to everyone who came to the empty tomb. The message was what? He ain't here, but he promised, as he said before he died, to meet you in Galilee. So you better get to getting. Uh, okay, brothers and sisters, how am I helping you today? I'm helping you to know that there are witnesses of what Jesus has said he would do and what he has done, okay? I, I heard what you said, but don't you have another witness? Oh, yeah, got another witness. That other witness, brothers and sisters, doesn't have hands and feet. That other witness, brothers and sisters, doesn't have a mouth to talk. But I imagine uh, in my mind's eye, as the old preacher would say, if that witness could talk, he would stand uh, up in the courtroom, and he would go into the witness box. They would ask him, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And that witness would say, I do. And they would ask, would you please state your name? Well, the witness would say, well, let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I was created a, a long time ago. I was created before uh, Jesus was born earthly. I was created a long time ago. And when I originally got here, they called me mountain. Uh, the witness would say, but as a result of need in the life of, of one uh, Joseph, uh, what happened is uh, he came and he picked me out. And, and when, well, when Joseph picked me out, he told those who were masons, uh, those who were uh, stone masons, that, that I was the right pick for him. And, and, and so then when they got to working on me, they had to change my name from mountain to cave. Then they had to change my name from cave to tomb. So I just want to stand up as the tomb and give my witness as to what I saw. Ah. Uh, uh, I could see the tomb standing up and saying, yeah, I remember when Joe came and picked me out and, and, and he wanted me to be for him and his family. I, I remember how he, he looked and he, he chose the right spots for the family to be laid. I, I remember how it was with a, a great a love for, 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 for stonework and masonry that he chose me, but he chose me in preparation for his life. When Joe chose me as the tomb, he was thinking about him and his. But isn't it something, brothers and sisters, how when you come into relationship with Jesus Christ, when you see the power of God working through his, his son, brothers and sisters, isn't it amazing how what you have created for yourself when you come into the newness of life, of who God is, how it is that you will take what you have made for yourself and find yourself saying, God, all that I have, I offer it to you. I know I was thinking about me, myself, and I. 
But now I find myself thinking about nobody but thee. But then I can remember, or I can hear it in my mind's eye, brothers and sisters, how Toon found himself saying, yeah, there was a few people that came to me, and they were looking for him on the inside of me. But what I found uh, is that, here it is, thank you. What I found, what I found is that uh, though he came, and others came in looking for him, they didn't realize that my name got changed one more, one more again. You, you, you know, I was mountain. I became cave. Then I became tomb. But then last but not least, I became Airbnb. He said, because I was created for long-term stay. But once Jesus got hold of me, Lord have mercy, I became short-term stay because he only stayed for the weekend. I thought he was going to be here for a lot, but he stayed. And I knew it was something different about him because once they sealed him in, once they put the stone over the opening of the cave, over the opening of the tomb, then a little while later, three days, all of a sudden there started a little noise on the inside of me. And, and the noise was, was, was unusual because my cousins who are tombs, they never told me that, that this could happen. What is it that happened? Well, let me tell you. I saw, I saw him get up. He raised up as he was laying on the slab. And, and when, he, when he raised up, I, 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 I imagine, uh, because I did have one cousin who had an experience something like this. And I guess I should have been expecting this because of the experience that my cousin had. Well, what's the experience of your cousin? Well, my, my cousin tells me that one day, that not too long ago, that there was, there was a situation. Somebody say situation. A situation where a fella named Lazarus was down on the inside of my cousin. And then the same Jesus found himself saying, show me where you lay Lazarus. Uh, because it ain't time for Lazarus to stay gone, y'all. And so they showed him where Lazarus had been laying. But then, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that Jesus goes over. And he what? He calls Lazarus' name. And when Jesus calls your name, I don't care what thinks it has a grip on you. When Jesus calls your name, ah. Uh, Whatever's holding on to you has got to let go. But then, then old tomb says, so I should have been expecting this. But here it is, he lays up as he's on the slab. And, and I found, I found him shaking himself. And, and, and when he shook himself, that, that reminded me of my cousin's situation. Because here it is, uh, my cousin's situation was, that when Lazarus came up out of the grave, Jesus told those who were around, he said, loose him and let him go. But here it is. Uh, when Jesus was inside of me, he didn't call nobody. He loosed himself. He set himself free. He began to shake. And those bondages and bandages that were upon him had to let go of him. Ah, even, he, listen, listen, listen. He said even, even to the point that, 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 that the headband that was on him, he shook it off and then had nerve to sit up and to wrap it up neatly to let somebody know that this was not an earthquake that shook it off, but it was a, it was a Jesus quake that shook it off. Oh, you're not feeling me this morning. What I'm trying to told you this morning is that no matter what tries to hold on to you, oh, uh, for somebody over the last year, COVID tried to hold on to you. Oh, uh, fear tried to hold on to you. Anguish tried to hold on to you. 
But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. That God spoke into your life. And whatever tried to hold on to you had to let you go. Uh, thank God for, for, for the tomb who was willing to testify. But brothers and sisters, now the question is, if the tomb testifies of this, if the tomb testifies of how he heard the angel tell him to go to Galilee to see Jesus. I, I, and pastor, you've always told us that when we study the word, we need to know what God said. Then what did God mean? And then what does it mean, not to me, but for me? I'm glad you asked. Guess what? Paul helps us in the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul helps us in chapter number 15. I don't need it. Somebody down the street probably need that. But Paul helps us in chapter number 15. Paul teaches us, brothers and sisters, that when we come into contact, when we come into the knowledge of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it ought to do something for you. What ought it do? Well, Paul talks about in chapter number 15 of this said book, 1 Corinthians, he talks about the resurrection of Christ, and he says as a result of the resurrection of Christ, there are a few things that ought to happen in your life. He says, here it is. You realize that you have an earthly body, but because of Christ being resurrected, you now receive a resurrected body. He says in verse number 42, that your earthly body was perishable, but also that your resurrection body is imperishable. He says in verse number 43 that your earthly body exists in dishonor, but your resurrection body exists in honor. Listen, and is raised in glory. He goes on, he says in verse number 43b, uh, our earthly bodies exist in weakness. Anybody here today would be willing to testify that your earthly body is a weak body. It's constantly breaking down. Your earthly body is a body that's constantly uh, reminded you that you got one day less today than you had yesterday. You got one more pain that you didn't have yesterday. Arthritis is having its way, and you say, I'm too young for that. You, your earthly body reminds you because when you walk in a room and forget what you walked in there for, Lord have mercy. Where, where are my glasses? Looking for my glasses. Then, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us, verse number 44 of that same book, that we what? Have a natural earthly body. But then when we are raised spiritually, what? We have a spiritual body. Listen, then he goes on, he says in verse 44, uh, 45 and 47, that the first Adam was a living being from the earth, but the last Adam, somebody say the last Adam. Who is that? Jesus. He what? He is a life-giving spirit from heaven. Then, brothers and sisters, we find, last but not least, that, that our earthly bodies are mortal, but our resurrection bodies are immortal. Then, brothers and sisters, the shouting good news that brings it all home is that the tomb said, guess what I heard, y'all? The tomb said, I heard that because Jesus got up, everybody who believes in him, Lord have mercy, will have the same result. And because of that, we don't have to worry. We don't have to fear. Lord have mercy. Listen, listen, listen. I need you to get this today. When you sit down, and think about the frailty of your life. When you sit down and think about how it is that at one point in time in your life, you had it all together. You thought, you, you thought your plan was working perfectly. And then out of nowhere, something shows up that you could not control. Could have been in your body. 
could have been something that happens in your community. Could have been something that, that just merely just blindsided you. But it showed you that you ain't in the control that you thought you were in. Now the book shows to us, brothers and sisters, that the last enemy that we have to deal with is that enemy called death. Brothers and sisters, over the last year, we've all came, we've all come close face to face with death. You, you, you don't believe me. See, you saying, I never caught COVID. But did you worry about it? What were you overly concerned about it? I know I've gone through some times where I was thinking, you know, what were the times when anxiety got a grip on you. What it should not have done is to drive you further away from the resurrected Christ. What it should have done is to drive you closer to Christ. Knowing that his word declares that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Knowing that the word of God declares in the book of Hebrews that because Christ was raised from the grave, we who, who yet live and believe in him, if death were to come our way, we shall live again. My heart, brothers and sisters, went out to so many who I saw that had no relationship with Christ. Can't tell you how many funerals. I said funerals, not home-going services. How many funerals I've attended over this last year. Can't tell you how many funerals of people that I could not say, see you later. But I had to say goodbye. I, I can't tell you how it grips the heart to know somebody that was a good person, a nice person. And at the culmination of their lives, there's nothing to be said about relationship with the resurrected Jesus the Christ. I would do you a disservice if I were not to tell you, brothers and sisters, that, that Jesus dealt with death. Jesus overcame death. On behalf of Pastor Kevin B. Mack and the Mount Zion Church family, we would like to say thank you for tuning in. We hope that you have been blessed by something you have seen or heard today. Please stay connected to us through all of our social platforms. You can find us on our website at www.mtzecourse.org. You could also search for us on Facebook by searching for Mount Zion eCourse. You can also connect with us on Instagram at mtzecourse. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this page.